Some rituals get reinvented to address the needs of new generations. Such is today's lesser known Jewish fast day that I invite you to mark with me today in whatever way works for you. There is much grief in our world right now and there is value in taking time and space for grieving rituals. Today, as the year nears its end on our Western calendar, and while this war continues its devastating toll, I am fasting from sunrise until sunset and devoting an hour just before the fast ends and Shabbat begins for a silent vigil of mourning in remembrance of wars and lost lives, ancient and current. On the Jewish calendar, today is the 10th of Tevet. This has been a fast day of grief for 2,600 years, and it was amended 70 years ago. It was first instituted in response to the trauma of Jerusalem's destruction in 587 BCE. This is the date on, on our calendar commemorating what at the time was the greatest national calamity, the destruction of the temple, the loss of sovereignty, massive death toll, and exile. Ezekiel the prophet lived through this tragedy and documents this date in his earlier chapters. On this day, the Babylonian army set the siege upon Jerusalem. The final destruction of the starved and humiliated city will take 18 months. The 10th of Devet was the start of the siege. The 17th of Tammuz marks the first breach of the wall. The 9th of Av saw the burning of the temple. And the 3rd of Tishrei was when the last Judean governor was murdered and the Judean era finally ended. Each of these four dates are fast days on our calendar. For centuries, with each additional collective disaster, more meanings were attached to some of these days, and more dates were added to the calendar of calamities. In 1949, in response to the horrors of the Holocaust, the rabbinate of the still quite young State of Israel declared the 10th of Tevet as the collective Kaddish day an opportunity to honor the countless dead who were not counted or buried with no known time or place of death. Those include my grandmother and other relatives. In our home, an extra memorial candle was always lit on this day and a mourner's Kaddish recited. This year, as I'm reading through these chapters of Ezekiel on this Below the Bible Belt journey, I have a deeper sense of appreciation of the details of this ancient tragedy. And while this painful war rages on, I feel an extra need to lift up the life-affirming rituals of our tradition, not just to mourn the past, but also the present, perhaps to help us prevent some of the horrors of the future. In the last chapter that we read this week, Ezekiel imagined the final war of the future, the messianic reality that will only come on the heels of major rupture and cosmic battles. And that war, when that war is over, he imagines, the divine voice will be raised louder and the sense of the sacred will prevail over all discord. The prophet's words include a phrase that will, with time, become the backbone of the Kaddish the prayer of sanctification that evolved to be the Aramaic prayer with which we pause to honor our dead. Ezekiel speaks for God in chapter 38 and says, Thus will I manifest my greatness and my holiness and make myself known in the sight of many nations and they shall all know that I am God. Manifest my greatness and holiness Vehitgadalti Vehitkadashti became Yitgadal Vehitkadash, the opening words of the Kaddish, calling on us to be in the presence of mystery, humble in the face of death and life, helping to manifest a world of greater holiness and more love. Ezekiel's futurist vision is about a world ravaged by violence and arrogant armies that defy decency and even silence the sacred, 
a world in which evil seems to be in charge, a world of injustice, yearning for justice, our world. The Kaddish claims reality that is larger than what's meeting us here and now. And it is a plea for divine intervention, for compassion, consolation, a request for justice and for peace. Whether our pain is personal or public, we suffer from the deaths that we encounter. And with these words, we yearn for healing, repair, redemption. Now on this day, I want to invite you to mark the morning, maybe by reciting the Kaddish alone or with others, or through this powerful opportunity created by my friend and teacher, Rabbi Regina Sandler Phillips, creator of Ways of Peace, an interfaith vigil to honor the dead and bear witness to the suffering of the living. Rabbi Regina writes, grounded in ancient Jewish practice, vigil keeping allows us to bear witness to the current crisis, each in our own personal ways, as part of a collective support effort. This year, the day of General Kaddish on the 10th of Tevet offers an opportunity to honor and mourn the thousands of innocent civilians whose bodies remain unidentified, unrecovered through the attacks of October 7th and the subsequent weeks of war. Whether the dead are Jewish or not, accompanying them, the named and the unnamed, Israelis and Palestinian, Asian migrant workers, African agricultural students and asylum seekers, and beyond is an ethical imperative that reflects millennia of Jewish teachings. If you're interested in keeping vigil from your home, please see details in the post attached to this video. I'm standing today in solidarity with all humanity, lighting candles in Jerusalem today to welcome Shabbat, honor all souls, pray for peace. I invite us all to be part of the ongoing chain that helps hold space for grief and growth, more sacred with each gesture of love. And for those of you celebrating Christmas this coming Sunday, may it be a sacred season of light and joy, an opportunity for gathering with love and care. Merry Christmas. May redemption heal all. Wishing us all better days for all. Shabbat Shalom.